Hello and welcome to this new video. My name is Damien Rohrbach. I'm a jewelry artist and today we're going to make a very nice render. A simple way. So I'm going to import a ring and prepare the scene. So we're going to make this with LuxCore, which is an add-on that you download and install. I already show that in other videos, so it's not the question today. Okay, so that's the ring. Let's start preparing. This is just one mesh because it has been imported at, as an SDL. So with the L key, ah, you know what? Let's turn on this friend. Okay, so with the L key, we're going to select the stones. Okay, now we're going to add a material, make a new one. These are the diamonds. Let's click on assign. Now do a control I to invert the selection, add another material, create a new one. This is gold, assign. So we can just double check. Let's click on select. This is correct. These are the diamonds and this is the ring. All right. So we're ready with assigning materials. Let's save the scene. Render. So we can remove the default light. The camera, we're going to put it, you know, here, three quarter. I'll control zero to set the camera. So here we are with the camera. There's no environment, there's no ground, there's nothing. So let's start. Add a plane. Let's center it right there. Let's make it something like 250 big. This is good enough. The clipping of the camera is not even a, an issue in this particular occasion but sometimes you need to go to your camera and check the clipping and especially you want to put that very high so the view never ends okay so now we have a floor the plane let's go call it floor or let's call it ground let's make a new material also for the ground, ground. But now we have no lights and we need to adjust the materials. So, um, first let's bring an HDR for the general light, which is generally the only thing you want is one HDR making the entire illumination. So let's go to open. Uh, I'm going to select this one and uh, well for now let's have a quick preview everything is great because we need to adjust the materials all right so let's go to shading uh, first I won't make any render preview so we don't slow down the things okay so the gold ring don't forget to go to materials gold so use show notes and these are look score nodes which are different than cycles octane or whatever render remove this one add a metal material you can see that there's not, nothing applied to the gold so it's black which is correct okay here we just want to put the gold color uh, obviously it depends a lot on the environment you have. For now, this is 
this is okay we'll see later now the diamonds so select here because this is the material list remove the matte material add the glass material and connect here so now IOR is 2418 for diamond dispersion is the highest one so here the system says the highest one is 0.012342 so let's put 0.012342 that's the highest dispersion for a diamond which is not absolutely physically optically correct but will be verified don't worry okay now let's have a look at what we have here okay so you can see that uh, okay it's gold color and the diamonds are making that those nice dispersion colors obviously this is the viewport preview and uh, we can remove the outlines to have a better look here and there we might lack a bit of light and contrast on our hdr so let's go to the world here let's put gamma at two that's more contrast but light is gone a bit gain at two maybe even at three okay that's a bit nicer uh, on the floor on the ground let's add a glossy material we can make it a bit lighter okay so for a very basic setup this is good what changes a lot is that my HDR environment has a lot of colors. We can see the blues from the sky because it's a landscape. You might like that or not. So just go find a file uh, that has only black and white and grays like this one. Now the gamma and the gain is too high. Let's bring it lower on one. And that's what you get with a studio HDR. I don't like this one. I'm gonna try another one. And you're gonna see very quickly that finding a proper studio light is always harder than it seems. This one is pretty good. With this one, I'm going to try maybe more gamma and maybe not so much gain. So, gamma affects the, contra uh, the contrast. Maybe we would like to add, because sometimes we do need help from other lights. So, you need to go to add light. The area light is the best light in many softwares. Or mesh lights. Uh, this is not a mesh light, but okay. Let's put it zero. Let's put it there. Start. Then let's go at uh, the light. Let's put the power unit. Let's put it pretty high and efficiency somewhere there. Obviously, to find the proper position for your light is also always time consuming and that's part of the effort you need to make that's part of your job basically okay so there okay the size let's have a look at the size of the light and let's bring it maybe a bit closer here that's the close obviously even we can see the light there it looks cool, you can't prevent objects from being reflected or illuminated in simple ways. So anyway. Alright, so this is pretty basic. 
Well, let's make a render. In jewelry, we need a lot of path for the lights. Let's remove the preview a second. Go with the bounces. We need a lot of bounces. Let's turn on the light tracing, which makes the fast caustics, which is the bounce of the light on the metal, especially, which is what light uh, look score does a lot better than mm, almost any other render engine. Okay, the denoiser, let's go like, I think this is the memory usage, so if you have a lot of RAM, put it higher. And also the color management, generally we love to use the very high con contrast. Then we'll have to maybe tweak again the lights because of changing this. So now, well, we can have a couple of things to tweak. There's a bit too much light and the gold is a bit too yellow. So we're just going to, well first I'm going to take down a bit the strength of this light, I guess. Let's try efficiency at one, which is way lower. That's pretty good, but let's go maybe at 16 and power at 400. And we can see we, we're having the light. These, these colors actually are from the light tracing from the gemstones, from the diamonds on the floor. They're bounces because they're caustics from the gemstones. Okay, there are still um, a bit too much light. Maybe the world, let's go to 0.15. Okay, this is pretty good. Now the gold is a bit too, well, that depends also your preference. The color of the, of the gold is very subjective. Some people like it a bit darker, a bit greener, a bit bluer. This is, in this specific scene, this is perfect. So here we are, again, because I did it last week, but people ask me uh, this simple question, and this is the simple answer, how to do a basic diamond jewelry, gold jewelry render and make it look realistic this is the, the simplest way to do it okay so now uh, for the render well here you have your resolution this is good and uh, we're good with the rest let's go f12 which is for rendering. So now, LuxCore uses all your GPUs. Uh, if you have an NVIDIA, it's going to use the Coda cores. If you have an AMD, you need to use the OpenCL, which works very well in LuxCore. So you're gonna be fine anyway. And you're gonna be happy anyway using LuxCore. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have an NVIDIA card or an AMD card you will be happy using Blender and LuxCore. So there it goes, so samples, it's going pretty fast. Um, obviously the more samples, the more light tracing, Okay, the only thing I'm going to check is that I'm seeing a bit of the mesh here. I don't know if I, uh, okay. I'm going to escape this one for a second. You know, you gotta check your details. All right, uh, let me have a look at, maybe the smooth is not turned on. Okay, let's go to layout a second. All right. If you see the meshes, okay, first I'm going to select everybody and make something uh, shading smooth faces and shading smooth edges. Obviously on the stones, this is totally wrong. So I'm going to go to select the diamonds with the material select. Now the shading on the stones is flat faces, but I'm also going to add the sharp edges. 
when you do sharp edges in Luke score is going to be called a custom normal. The software is going to say that it's an error, but most of the time it's just a warning and nothing happens. In meaning that, okay, so here we can see a bit of the geometry. Let's just have a look also at the normals, auto smooth. So let's go and do an F12. And this is all we need for. Okay, so Luke score renders really fast uh, you, because it uses all your hardware CPU, GPUs, your RAM, everything. So now we have uh, more than a thousand samples. So the amount of samples depends on the quality you want to get. Uh, more samples, less fireflies generally normally fireflies come from your lights so if you do have fireflies uh check your lights remove uh, all that uh, that's why generally we, do, we only want to use the hdr hdr light lighting because it tends to make no fireflies at all okay so now let's say we're going to render up to two thousand samples so just a couple of um, seconds or a minute maybe and uh, because then there's just a slight thing you need to know on how to save the image so you stay happy and sane and don't uh, lose your render because we're gonna have here right up here it says combined depth and denoised. You want the denoised image because we have the denoised turned on. It's all black. The thing is that it's all black because now I'm going to hit the escape key right here. It's going to denoise now. It's saying denoising. It's done denoising. So the denoised pass is the resulting image which is very pretty obviously because because we are professionals and uh, I've been doing renders for decades so this is it for now I hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe and become members because members get these models and these scenes that's the way it is so this is pretty amazing to be a member of my channel and guess what it's going to be better and better every month so be nice to people be happy take care and see you soon